All right, welcome back. We're gonna take on the muscles of the body now. So hopefully you've got the skeleton all drawn in. If you haven't done that, I would encourage you to, to do that now. Um, and then we're going to, uh, we're gonna take on the, starting with the head, we'll work our way through the body here. One of the things that's really uh, cool about the muscle anatomy is that it's going to help explain what's happening on the surface of the figure. So when we start talking about the furrow of the brow, we can look at what are the angles of the, the striations of the muscles, and that will, will always have folds of skin across, it will have those creases across the striations of the muscles, so the direction of the muscle fibers. All right, so we can divide the muscles of the uh, face, the head, really into, into two categories. Uh, some use the words mastication, which means chewing, or function. So we have the muscles of function, and then we have the muscles of expression. Those are about 20 different flat muscles. Now those muscles are pretty unique in the body because they, they don't hook to joints. They don't move bones. They actually move our skin and allow us to be very social and express ourselves through, through our facial expressions. So, uh, so we'll take on the function, the muscles of function, and then we'll take on the muscles of expression. All right, muscles of function. We really have two major muscles for chewing. Uh, this large one here is called the temporalis, and uh, it, it really sits in that opening right underneath, when we talked about the zygomatic arch coming up here, that temporal line, the temporal bone here, this, the muscle is going to reach all along here, and it's going to come down and attach itself to the top of the, this coronoid process of the mandible. And so that's going to insert itself behind the uh, zygomatic arch here. So the muscle fibers are going to run like this. Okay. And then the whole muscle and it's attaching it's attaching right right here on the top, coming through the zygomatic arch and on that coronoid process there. That's the temporalis. The other important muscle here for chewing is called the masseter. And the masseter is going to attach all along the bottom of the zygomatic arch and it's going to come back to the back corner of the mouth here. So it's going to have this kind of shape to it. And the muscle fibers are going to go in this direction. Look at that. A little bit of color too. Now we'll be putting quite a few muscles behind the masseter, but for now. But for now, we'll, we'll have that there, okay? And temporalis. Oops. All right, so coming over to the front view here, temporalis is going to fill in this opening here, and then it'll go back. So it rounds out the head where it feels narrower in front. It now has much more of a volume to it. So kind of the head becomes much more circular. And this is the temporalis muscle. And it's going to hook inside the zygomatic arch on the coronoid process. Then the masseter, again, is coming up from that back corner up along the whole inside. That, end, that lower edge of the zygomatic arch. The masseter, by the way, is the strongest, for its size, is the strongest muscle in the body. All right. Uh, we might catch key, but 
coming back here. Yes. Ever so slightly big. All right. All right, next muscle. So these are really the muscles of function. Uh, we, could, we could argue one more in a little bit, the buccinator, but let's, let's keep going here. On the front, there is a muscle that goes over, really has bellies over both, both uh, eyes here. And then it forms this kind of sheath that will take you back, very thin sheet, back over the top of the head. And this is called the frontalis. And uh, the thin, thin sheath is called an epicranius. It comes back, and on the back, it comes over too. So the epicranius is coming over the top here in this thin sheet, and it comes down, and, and there's more belly of muscle here again called the occipitalis. And that thin sheet running over, okay? So again here, all along the front of the brow, above the brow, frontalis. And then heading back over in that sheath. With the, uh, the side view here, we'll have frontalis just above the brow here. And we'll have that thin sheath going back. And then again, we'll have another belly of the muscle on the back of the occipital bone here. Okay. And collis. All right, we've been talking about the muscles of function. So let's go, let's review those here. We have the masseter, right, for chewing. It hooks at the bottom, back corner of the jaw here. Of the mandible, it comes up along the zygomatic arch, attaches all along here. And then we talked about the temporalis, that's the bone or the muscle up here on the temporal bone. And you can see that that really, if you come up here, kind of really fills in, creates the roundness of the uh, skull there. Uh, we also talked about the frontalis on the frontal bone here, and the epicranius going in the sheath, going over the top. And on the occipital bone on the back, we have the occipitalis. And uh, that's what we covered so far. Next, we'll get into the eyes and the muscles around the eyes and work our way down into the uh, lips. So we're going to go more now into the muscles of expression. All right. You might recall this bone there, the glomella. If you want to put, just kind of draw almost right over on top of that. With the muscle that comes up a little above it here. But we can just fill that in. The muscle fibers again running up and down here. That's called the procerus. All right, PR. Let's just put a suggestion of the procerus here. Now we're going to go after the corrugators. They're a muscle that sits over the brow of the eye and really gives expression to your eyebrows.
All right, well, there's different kinds of shapes of muscles in your body. Probably everybody kind of knows like the bicep, right? So a big belly muscle with a couple of tendons coming off on each side. Well, there's other shapes too. So like, uh, especially, there's a very unique one around your eyes and also around your mouth. It's a muscle that runs in a circular fashion with an opening in the middle. And uh, it'll come up above, outside of the socket of the eye. But if you draw a nice big circle like that, that'll kind of catch where it, where it is, okay? And then the, it will have kind of like a, just kind of a slit opening there. And the fibers of the muscle, they run in a circular idea around the eye. And do that over here too. This is, these muscles are the orbicularis oculi. All right, these muscles that orbit, the circular muscles around the eye. Okay. Let's catch a little bit of the corrugators coming around here and down. And then orbicularis oculi. strands running around the eye like that. Well, on your nose, you have some cartilage that comes down. There's this bridge piece. There's a, a ball on the end, and then there's these wings here of the nostrils called the hours. And we're going to go after the, that's all cartilage, right? So we're going to go after the first muscle. We're going to go after the nasalis muscle. It's going to come down kind of like this. It's certainly going to make the, the nostrils more pronounced when they're flexed, nasalis. And then what we'll do is we'll come up here on the front of the nose and draw a nasalis as well. Maybe we can put in that ball of the nose. We did that in yellow. That cartilage really has kind of a, I feel like it kind of has sort of a, almost like a, oh, it comes, it's almost like two balls here. And then the wings of the nostrils, of course, are going to come come down and around. So kind of that ball there. So these, all this is going to sit on top of all that. Here we have Nasalis coming down here. Here you can see the sort of the ball, the bridge of the nose, the wings, the alars coming around here. Uh, Proceris again up here, orbicularis oculi there. Okay. So now we're going to work on the muscles of the upper lip. And of course, with, when we're drawing these in isolation, the muscles of, the, of expression don't work just in isolation. They, they fire together. They work in, uh, synchronization with each other. So it's not like you can just 
do one little muscle here and then not use any of the others. This first one has quite a name to it. It's called the Levator Levi Superioris Aliqui Nasi. This muscle has three parts to it. It's going to have an attachment point up in here. It's going to have an attachment point across here and then down here towards the lips. So it really furrows up right here in the, between the lips and the nose. And it's going to come like this, out like this, and up here like this. Later, labi, superiors. Then on the front, it's really going to sort of come around like this. Oh, breathe in. Okay. The next muscle that's deep to a couple of the others is simply the levator lami superioris. And it's going to come down to the outside of the one we just drew, kind of like this. The muscle fibers, the strands running, running down like this. Levator, labi, superior. The levator, labi, superioris from the side view right under sort of the deepest part of the droop of the socket of the eye, and then coming down like this, right beside our levator, lamellae superioris, alecumnesia. All right, now we're going to do the zygomaticus minor. It's going to come down from the outside of the zygomatic arch there, right on the arch, and it's going to come down towards the center here of the orbicularis oris, and that circular, it'll have a muscle that's circular like the eyes. So this is attaching on the inside of the fleshy parts of the lips, and the zygomaticus minor, when it pulls your mouth up, it's going to elevate near the corner of the mouth, uh, some people call this the uh, grief muscle, if you think about kind of the, the lips coming up, but not, not, not in a smiling sort of way, not at the corner of the mouth, but near the corner. Okay, Zygomaticus minor. Okay, the next, the next one here is the Zygomaticus major. It's going to sit outside of the Zygomaticus minor. And it's going to come down right, right at the corner of the mouth, where, where the lips sort of meet, the real corner of the lips. So uh, it's coming down like this. It's a little beefier than the zygomaticus minor, too. So that will be. So it's really moving the whole outside part of the mouth. This is uh, the zygomaticus major, could be known as the smiling muscle. So it really pulls on the corner of the lips upwards. All right, now for the side view, let's take on 
the first muscle to the inside of the lips. That would be the levator labi superioris. It's coming down from the deepest part of the bottommost part of the socket uh, towards the nose. It's got, uh, it's going to be pulling up the lips just, to, it's right next to the levator labi superioris aliquid nasi. And it's uh, one that reveals the teeth, the canines. The next up here is going to be the zygomaticus minor, moving towards the outside of the lips now. Not at the corner of the mouth, but near the corner. Coming down at a diagonal from behind the deepest part of the orbit of the eye. Zygomaticus minor. Okay, let's look at these th muscles of the upper lip. Zygomaticus major on the outside coming down from the zygomatic arch, the minor and then the levator superioris labi on the inside there. The next muscle we're gonna go after, it'll attach right alongside this ridge here that comes down from the cornoid process. And it's gonna to attach to the inside of your lips again, and it's a muscle that runs horizontal like this. Don't get confused here, this will actually be underneath the uh, masseter, but We'll, we'll cover, cover it back up again in a second. Uh, this is the buccinator. So it actually pulls the mouth back towards the earlobe. Uh, sometimes it's known as the trumpet muscle because of that action. And it, it can sort of inflate a bit too. So on the front view, buccinator is gonna run along this ridge here on each side. Again, the attachment point is the inside corner of the mouth. Along that ridge there, and then coming in. Buccinator. Okay, on top of buccinator is resorius. It's a muscle that often works in conjunction with zygomaticus major as, as part of your smiling muscle. So it's, again, it's going to start from the middle of that ridge. It's going to sit on top here. Give me a break, yellow. Okay, you can see that right in there and right in here. Again, it's a muscle that runs horizontal. Uh, part of your group of smiling muscles, I guess. So it's So Rosorius you're going to see from the side too here, maybe even a little better. All right, here's the buccinator deep to the Rosorius coming down across to the corner of the lips there. All right, we can take on another uh, round muscle, the orbicularis oris. So this is gonna be covering major area of the mouth here. And similar to the eyes, it's going to have a slit going to have a slit here in the middle and then the muscle fibers they'll go around in a circular form rippling out if you will from the uh, slit in the center that slit idea it really helps me think about the shape of the lips as I'm drawing them and it provides a good structure for laying on the, the surface of the lips so orbicularis Oris, the opening of the lips as they orbit the mouth. Let's go for the lower lip muscles now. So these are the ones that are going to be pulling the lips down. The first one is out of the corner of the mouth here. In fact, let's just, uh, let's just clean up for a second. We had Rosorius. That was the yellow muscle here. That will be on top 
of our masseter, but underneath the, ma the masseter would be the buccinator. Okay. I just, okay. So just the yellow one on top. Okay. So out of the corner of the mouth here, we're going to have a very triangular shape muscle. And the fibers kind of run a bit towards the front, like that. This is called the depressor. Angulus. Oris. Or sometimes called a triangularis because of the triangle shape there. So from the corner here, triangularis coming up, forming that kind of a triangular shape there. Depressor. Depressor angulus. Morris. The next muscles are the middle muscles here. Depressor labi inferioris. So they pull the lips down from the mid, more or less from the middle of each side of the mouth. So they'll come up like this. And again, catching to the inside of the mouth. Depressor. Labi. Inferiors. So we'll probably, from the side, you see these come out basically to the front of the lips in this kind of a direction. Depressor. Depressor. That's labi. Inferioris. Okay, the last muscle here coming inside. So the depressors from the corners, from the middles, and then what we're going to do now is go after the depressors called the mentalis. Okay? And um, they're going to kind of come up this way. So closer uh, at the bottom and sort of spreading a little bit towards the top. So they're called the uh, mentalis. Mentalis muscles. And they really kind of gnarl up the uh, chin a little bit there. So we might, we might catch the mentalis a little bit right here. But I just put a little M in there, mentalis. Okay. Back over here, just to note, with the mentalis, you want to take the depressors of the middle of the lower lips over. I think that's how I drew that there for you to see that. They'll be higher to the deeper will be the mentalis muscles there. All right, we have triangularis on the outside of the lips. Uh, the depressor labi inferioris in the middle there, and then the mentalis underneath there. Well, that's it for the muscles of the face. You know, so much of the face is influenced by that skull underneath. It's well worth studying the skull again, too. I uh, hope this has helped you. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.